two examples, one with x, one with y. Let's see how it looks. Example two. Find the surface area of the solid of revolution. Again, whenever we talk about this, we're not talking about the caps at either end. The outer side. The solid of revolution generated... How many words here? Generated by rotating r about the given axis. Part a is going to be the function f of x equals the square root of x, the interval 1 to 4, and r is the region under f. And we want to rotate this about x axis. We'll get a little picture, do the problem, and we'll just set it up and evaluate it later. Okay, so again, little picture, we have the square root function from 1 to 4, and we're rotating this thing about the x-axis. We have this surface, and we're trying to find the surface area the outer surface area, this surface area right here. And we're just going to use a formula. All right, again, this is square root of x. So we know by the formula that we're rotating about the x-axis, so we need everything in terms of x. All right, we're looking at the region under the function, and we're rotating it about the x-axis. We need this formula. So that tells us that the surface area is going to be 2 pi times the integral from a to b of the function times the square root of 1 plus its derivative. Especially when you're using more complicated functions that get a little longer, I highly recommend just writing it out every time. It's much easier to substitute and use a formula if you're doing it right one on top of the other. So in our case, integral is from 1 to 4, making sure I'm Liking things incorrectly. Integral from 1 to 4 of the function, which is just the square root of x, times the square root, oh, interesting, 1 plus the derivative squared. Well, we need the derivative. The function is the square root of x. So it's derivative. And y prime is really a much neater way of writing this formula, but... This is more precise, what we have. We just use the power rule and simplify. I'm not going to do all the derivative steps, but that's the answer. And we need to square that, because it's always the derivative squared. We'll simplify and evaluate this integral. I'm going to do that at the end of the video, because that's just chapter one stuff. You can also pause the video right now and do it, and then see at the end of the video whether we have the same answer. That was the wrong button. Part B is the function, the cubed root of 3x on the interval 0 to 8 thirds, where r is the region to the left of the function, and we're rotating it about the y-axis. The two key words here, left, and y-axis. We're going to need things in terms of y here. We're going to need that second formula here. Rotating it about the y-axis, looking at the region to the left. That's our catch. So it's a cubed root function that's horizontally compressed a little bit. Cubed roots look like this. That's one of those toolkit functions that a lot of people talk about in pre-calculus. And x is going from 0 to 8 thirds. But we need things in terms of y. We're doing the region to the left, rotated about the y-axis. We have this sort of a deal. We have this surface. We're looking at this surface area. All right. So we need things in terms of y. 
or in terms, yeah, in terms of y. So we know y is the cubed root of 3x. We need to solve for x. Cube both sides. Divide by 3. You get x is 1 third times y cubed. Now we'll also need the derivative of this resulting function. Because remember, our surface area formula is 2 pi times the integral from c to d of the function with respect to y. A lot of times we use g for y. f is fine too. 1 plus the derivative of this g of y function squared. So we found this. It's 1 third y cubed. But we do still need this derivative. So you, if, you, if you feel more comfortable, you can write this as g, a function of y, is 1 third y cubed. And its derivative, using the power rule, is just y squared. Remember, we have two power rules, one for derivatives, one for integrals. Integrals is add a power, divide by that power. Derivatives is bring down the power, subtract a power. So they're, they're inverses of each other. Watch out for that. Now we can just plug things in. It's 2 pi. Y is going from... Oh, what is, what is Y going from? I know X is going from 0 to 8 thirds, but I don't know what Y is doing. All right, what's this Y coordinate up here? Well, when X is 8 thirds, what's Y? When X is 8 thirds... Y is the cubed root, 3 times 8 thirds. That's a cubed root of 8. That's a Y value of 2. Ah, the so Y is going from 0 up to 2. Of the function G of Y, which we found G of Y was 1 third Y cubed, times the square root of 1 plus its derivative, which we said was Y squared, what are we doing with that derivative? We're squaring it. And now we can just solve this integral. So that's the end of the video. That's all the important information. If you're curious, I'll do the integrals for A, part A and part B now, and you can check your answers. Again, I highly recommend you pause the video and try to do these on your own for practice. But if you want to check your answers, here I am. And again, these are also in the book. So to simplify this, we're going to do two things. We have a square root multiplied by another square root. We can combine their insides. So I'm going to write x times 1 plus all this other stuff. Simplifying this, this will be 1, four, one over 4x. And then we can distribute that x, and hopefully we get something nice. When we do that, we're going to get x plus a fourth. Because the x is in the second term, we'll cancel in the distributing step. And now we can do a u substitution and get our answer. The u is going to be x plus a fourth. du is going to be just dx. Oh, so this is a nice substitution. Okay, well, if x is equal to 1, what's u? Well, it's just 1.25. And if x is equal to 4, u is 4.25. So this becomes 2 pi integral from 1.25 to 4.25. The inside just becomes u, and the dx and du are the same thing. Take the antiderivative of the square root of x. Add an exponent. Divide by that exponent. We're still evaluating, whoa, not u. Sorry, not x, but u. No, October is being really adorable right now. Oh, it's hard to show you. No, my cable's not long enough. Oh, she's down there. She's kneading on the blanket, the Stardew Valley blanket. 
All right. Sad day. Again, from 1.25. 4.25. So we can combine this inside as 4 pi over 3, and then we get 4.25 to the 3 halves. When it's 1.25 to the 3 halves, there's no simplifying this. You can find a decimal approximation. So let's go do that. So there's a lot going on here in Desmos. Um, 4 pi over 3. I went through this pretty quickly, so I'm curious whether I made a mistake. I probably did. The three halves minus 1.25. The three halves. And is that the same as that integral? Hopefully it is. 2 pi times the integral from 0. From, sorry, from 1 to 4. Of square root of x times the square root of 1 plus. One over two square root of x squared dx. Whoa, that's weird. Actually, the right answer. I didn't make any silly algebra mistakes. That's that surface area. Thirty point eight four six units cubed. Uh, units squared. Its area. All right, and we can finish that other one as well. Over here, factor out the one third, we get two pi over three, times the integral from zero to two of y cubed, one plus y to the fourth. Now, we don't wanna do the same strategy here. If we wanted to, we could write this guy as the square root of y to the sixth. And as long as y is positive, these are the same thing. But that's not helpful because our u substitution is going to go a little differently than it did in the last example. This is our u, so we need that y cubed on the outside. If u is 1 plus y to the fourth, du is going to be 4y cubed dy. Ah, so we're pretty close. Just need a 4 here and a 4 in that denominator to compensate. Because now, this blue stuff is just du. So this simplifies to pi over 6, I believe. Let's not take steps. I'm going to try not to make mistakes. Yep, pi over 6, great. Now, u is 1 plus y to the 4th. 1 plus 0 to the 4th is 1. Nope, write it out, Jason. No mistakes. If x is 0... And u is 1 plus 0 to the 4th. u is 1. If x is 2, u is 1 plus 2 to the 4th. 2 to the 4th is 16. We're going from 1 to 17. The blue stuff just becomes du, and we're left with the square root of u. We can use the power rule on this. Pi over 6 from before. Add an exponent, divide by that exponent from 1 to 17. These are already in terms of u, so we can keep things in terms of u. We get a little cancellation, and we get pi over 9. 17 to the 3 halves minus 1 to the 3 halves. 1 to the 3 halves is still 1. This is our exact answer. We can also calculate it out. Pi over 9 times 17 to the 3 halves minus 1, about 24.118 units squared as our answer. Uh, we can check our answer using Desmos. Let's look at this integral. Is this the same thing? 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 2 of our function, which is one third y cubed, times the square root of one plus y to the fourth, dy, look at that, 
they're the same. This is a problem in the textbook as well. Look at all that stuff where they're talking about frustums. They talk about frustums a lot there. You can see the picture that we drew. You can see 24.118, just like we got. Beautiful. Beautiful. And that's the section. Let me know if you have any questions and have a nice day.